In today's video, I'm going to show you guys how to turn a terrible looking studio setup like this into something that looks more like this with just one budget light, a couple of inexpensive accessories, but mainly just a couple of tricks and tips. So let's head back to that terrible looking video so I can show you guys how to get to this. With the setup that I'm gonna show you guys today, it's one super budget light that's just over $100 and a couple other accessories that are really inexpensive. The first thing that we're gonna change is actually our audio because arguably having bad audio is harder to watch than having bad quality in your video. If you guys think about like a podcast or something, you can completely listen to a podcast with no visuals but you can't really watch a movie without any sound and even worse than no sound is like really bad, horrible sound. So what we're gonna be using for that is this little Rode Video Micro. We don't need this dead cat on, that's for the wind, but we're gonna be using this. And what I'm gonna do is just, I have a 3.5 millimeter extension that's just over here and I've got it up on a little boom pole just out of frame so that it's gonna be as close to my mouth as possible. That's just gonna help us get better audio. So I'm gonna stick that up here and show you guys the difference. Now we have the Rode Video Micro plugged in and as I'm sure you guys can hear, that sounds way better and almost makes this terrible looking video forgivable. The next thing that we're gonna change is the settings in our camera just to help make this look a little bit better. The first thing that we're gonna change is our aperture. Right now, we're shooting at quite a high aperture, which is a common mistake for beginners, especially if you leave your camera on auto. It's often gonna put your aperture way up, which makes everything in focus and there's no depth in the shot really. So everything back there is in focus as well as I am in focus. The other thing that auto does is bump the ISO way up, which makes this really muddy, not flattering image. It makes your image look soft and like grainy and bad. So we're gonna sort those two things out quickly and that's already gonna make a huge difference. Now our aperture is all the way down at f2.8 and that's creating some nice depth in the shot so that the background is a little bit out of focus and I'm in focus. It just makes me stand out a little bit more and pop from that background. We also turned our ISO all the way down so we're not gonna have so much mud and grain in our image. It's gonna be much cleaner and a much better look. The next thing we're gonna have to sort out is our white balance, although we are gonna have to change this once our lighting is all on. So let's talk a little bit about lighting and then we're gonna come back to our white balance. Lighting is super important and something that people are often a little bit scared of or maybe are hesitant to try and learn a little bit more about lighting, but it's not as hard as you think to set up a nice basic look. And I'm gonna show you guys exactly how I do that right now. The light that I'm gonna be using is a Godox SL60W. It's like $120, somewhere around that, really inexpensive and really cheap as well as this Godox softbox to help me achieve that really soft, nice look. And then I have it on some generic stand that was probably $10 or something like that. You guys can also use something that is like completely free, like using a bedside light or some other form of light like that. It is advised if you can get something like this, it's gonna be much easier and it's gonna end up looking a lot better. But I wanna to talk to you guys about a few things about light that are gonna help with your image the most, more than actually having this specific light. We now have our Godox light on and already this is looking way better. The other thing that I've done is turned off the actual room light because these lights are really bad for the light that hits your face. If you look at it, you get like raccoon eyes from all the light coming straight down onto your face and it's also a really harsh light. The most important thing that you guys wanna look for when you're trying to get light and trying to light yourself is that you want soft light because if the shadows are too harsh, it's really not flattering on your face the same way as if you're outside and you're in direct sunlight. That's why photographers like to shoot when the sun is a little bit lower or in like golden hour because the light is soft and much better looking on the face. The other thing is that the light is gonna come down a bit. So instead of it being directly above you, what I like to do is have it 45 degrees off to the side and 45 degrees up. That makes a nice light coming in onto the side of my face. It's creating some shadow on this face. A couple of other things to keep in mind when doing this, if you guys wanna change your lighting setup a little bit, depending on your taste, is if you wrap the light around this side a little bit more, it's gonna create more shadow on this side, which is gonna be a bit more of a moody look and like a more cinematic look, if that's what you want. For me, I like it kind of there. I don't like my studio to be too dark. It's kind of like a daylight setup. So I have not too much shadow on this side 
Another thing that you guys can try to do is if you want even less shadow than this, it's a good idea not to come past that 45 degree mark because it's just gonna be flattened onto your face. But what you can do is get something like a full light that will go just over here and light up this side of your face a little bit. Otherwise you can even get a bounce board or something like that. For me, this is perfect. Just the one lighting setup is good enough. There's a few other things that you guys can look out for when setting up your lighting to help make it look just a little bit better. The first thing I would suggest is always looking through your camera to see how your lighting looks because it's gonna look very different through your camera and lens than it would to you in real life. So you can either get a monitor set up to make sure that what you're filming is looking the way you want it, or you can get a friend to help you out that can come stand in and you can shape the light the way you want it to be. A couple of things that you guys wanna look out for is to have the shadow under the chin that helps to make the person look a lot better. And the other thing is, if you can create a little triangle on this side of your face, that is a common lighting setup that is often used in like actual cinema and stuff. And if you've got those two things along with soft light, your video should be looking pretty good already. The last thing we're gonna do now is quickly change our white balance so that it's not too yellow or too blue. It looks just right and that's really important and something that's often overlooked. Way better, now our studio is looking almost how it should and this would definitely be possible and you could fully shoot a video like this. We're gonna do a couple of other small little changes and I'm gonna give you guys a couple of other little tricks and hints to make it look even better and a couple of other things that I've done here to help make this look very like visually pleasing. So let's get into those. The first thing that I wanna mention is one more thing about lighting and that is a practical light. Basically that's a light that's in the background that you can see in the frame. I have one set up over there that I'm gonna turn on now and I'll show you guys what I'm talking about. So now I have my practical light turned on. There's a couple of things that this does that I really like. The first and main thing being that it creates more depth in our shot by adding that another layer of light. So you need to think about light in like pockets I'm the first pocket of light, and then we have a separate pocket of light that's that practical light and that background light. That light is set in a much warmer tone than our main light, and that's a really awesome way to bring in some color into the background. The other thing that I'm gonna do to bring some color into the background is that I have these screens set up. So now that I have some orange light on that side, I'm gonna add some blue light on this side by using these screens. I have a really nice ocean screensaver, and that's just a nice way of balancing out this orange and blue light, which is really contrasting. So let's flip that on quickly. As you can see with those on, it really balances out the image with some blue on this side now, and we have the orange on that side. Another thing that I like about these screens is that it's relevant to the videos that I'm making. This is a filmmaking channel, obviously, and I make videos about like things that would require using a computer. So this whole shelf also has props of things that I would use in like my videos and things. It's all camera gear and it's lenses. And it's important for you guys to think about what you want in the background of your studio that helps show what style of videos you're gonna be making and just creates that like brand image in that studio. Another really great way to add color to your set is by using gels. And you can add gels to little lights in the background. You can light up the whole wall a certain color if you would like to do that. I haven't done this in this video, but if you guys are interested in doing that, it's really easy. You can just get some gels or even file dividers that are like colored and you can put it in the background somewhere with a little light like that light otherwise just a little bedside light with a gel stuck over it you can light up that whole wall whatever color you would like and that also helps to make you pop out a little bit more the last thing that I want to mention is framing and my thought process behind how I frame this scene right here so the first thing that you want to do is pull yourself away from the background. Instead of me sitting right down there in the back, I've moved away from the wall and pushed my camera all the way to the opposite wall of the room. That's gonna create more depth. The other thing is that I've left this space around my head without anything obstructing it. It just makes it easier for the viewer to stay focused on me and not be too distracted from what's going on in the background. The last thing about framing is that I made sure to include some leading lines in my background. So if you look at the shelf, all of these lines are pointing towards me, which helps draw the viewer's eyes back towards here, which is the focus of this video, as well as this monitor is also like a leading line that's pointing more towards me and drawing that viewer's attention back to the subject of the video, which is myself. So just keep those few things in mind when you guys are framing it up. Don't put yourself right against a wall. That's like one of the worst things that you can do that everybody seems to do for some reason. It's all about creating depth, pull yourself away from the wall, and it's gonna make it look way better. So those are gonna be all the tips for you today. I hope you guys can agree that this looks much better 
than this setup, which is what we started out with today. And the only things that we used is this $130 light as well as a few other little accessories. It's important to note that this is not about the camera. It has so much more to do with what's going on around the camera, your lighting and your background and everything, how you've set it up. So even with a really inexpensive camera, you guys can absolutely achieve a really nice professional looking image if you guys follow these tips and tricks. That's gonna be it for this one. If you guys wanna see a full gear list of everything that I've used in this video and studio setup, it's all gonna be linked down below as well as the LUTs I use to grade the studio look. Remember to hit like if you guys enjoyed this video, subscribe if you guys want to see more videos like this and I will see you in next week's video. Peace.